We're moving to the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. And yes, this is this is going to be rough. So if you are a Yellow Jackets fan, I apologize to you right now. But this looks like this schedule <laughs> was set up by somebody that wanted Jeff Collins to get fired. I, why you would do this, I mean, I have no idea. I, I, I can't make sense of this at all. We'll get to the schedule. We'll get to the... I'm, I'm still... Every time I look at this, I, I get more and more perplexed because, my God. I mean, you open up with Clemson, and obviously that's a little bit of an ACC thing, but you, you go Western Carolina, that's good. Get a little bit of confidence. But then you play Ole Miss and at UCF. I mean... And then your first, uh, or I guess your second conference game is against the <laughs> the defending ACC champs. So... um. They are number 123 in returning production. That's number 103 on offense and number 119 on defense. 44% coming back on defense, 48% coming back overall. Post-game win expectancy last year was 3.54 and 8.46, so it was right around what they ended up, which was 3-9. and nine. Their projected SP Plus record is 3-9 and nine again. The roster strength is not great. Now looking at the offense, like Jeff Sims showed signs in 2020. But he was pretty subpar last year. Collins did bring in transfers, Gibson and Fomashan. I hope I said that right, uh, the backup quarterback from Clemson to compete for the job. So what they're doing as far as their quarterback room goes is, I guess, getting more guys uh, to compete for the job. Uh, Gibson comes in. He was the quarterback at Akron. This is such a perplexing football team. There's talent there, like especially with some of the transfers. Uh, can they develop enough chemistry to compete on offense? They were number 100 in PPA per drive last year. There's no specialty. There's no one thing that they do really well. They were number 89 in rushing success rate. Uh, they were number 91 in passing success rate. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's it, this is such a weird, such a weird thing. Um, here's what to know about the defense. Andrew Thacker's third year as defense coordinator. They did well against the run, uh, number 33 in rushing PPA. But when you look at their rushing success rate allowed, it's number 93. Um, they were terrible against the pass, number 29 or 129 in PPA per pass. It meshes with what they did on passing success rate, which is number 127. They tried to be aggressive last year. It did work at certain points. If you watch them against North Carolina, for sure. But on the whole... Like, this was not good. Number 66 in total scoring opportunities, and and they gave up number 104 points against. I mean, that's just, oh, it's putrid. Defensive line, woefully inexperienced. There is talent there. Linebacker looks good with Thomas and Ely, uh, but not much else is there. The defensive backs are at. They brought in five transfers, so you're looking for anything that's going to stick here. Um, they're projected favorites in two games. They got four games that are toss-ups, and that's... If you're a projected favorite in two games and you only have four games that are toss-ups, that means that eight games you are expected to be close to a double-digit underdog, if not, I would say if not more so, but that would mean triple digits. And I don't think we're going to get to that point. So they've only got five returning players that took more than 400 snaps for the Jackets last year. They had a bunch of transfers. Obviously, Jameer Gibbs uh, transferred out. Like, that's not good. Uh, Quez Jackson's gone. Jordan Dominic's gone. Like, uh, it's not a good time for a lot of new faces. This is kind of a make-or-break year for, for Jeff Collins. 17 transfers, 15 recruits in. Um, there's too much wrong here to come up with just a few keys to the season. Uh, unless all these transfers gel and you end up with a Michigan State situation like you did last year with Mel Tucker, this is going to get ugly because they've got a really, really difficult schedule. Um, I don't know what the record is for Collins to keep his job. That's that's the weird thing. It, is it five wins? Is it still not making a bowl game? Because if you get to five wins against this schedule when you've got this roster, I mean, you're almost a miracle worker at that point. Like, four of the first five games are brutal. Four of the fa uh, last five are on the road. Uh, again, I, I talked about it earlier. Like, their win total is three and a half. I, I think that I like the under. I've got them at two and ten here. I mean, I... You start off, and four of your first five are Clemson, Ole Miss, at Central Florida, at Pitt, 
And then on the back end, your four of your last five are at Florida State, at Virginia Tech. Then you play Miami at home. You got at North Carolina and at Georgia. I mean, where are you supposed to get your wins? Uh, Western Carolina and Duke are the wins that I've got on the schedule. Like, I, I don't know that you can beat Virginia because I don't know that you match up talent-wise. I just, I wonder. I wonder about this. This does not look like things are going to go well for Jeff Collins at all. Maybe you figure out who the next guy is going to be uh, because I just, I don't see things working out here. Like, this is, it, things have not gone to plan for for one Jeff Collins, for sure. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.